Hi everyone, uh, my name is Oriana Wen, and today I will be talking about how Blue Bottle uses data to deepen customer experiences. So I'll start off with a quick intro about myself. I am the Director of Data and Innovation at Blue Bottle, and what that means is um, I'm essentially a data wrangler and I take all these different streams of data and I shape that data into a usable form for our business users. Prior to this, I was actually the product manager on our e-commerce site and then I moved into um, our mobile app and I was actually on the launch team um, for the mobile app where we launched Ordering Ahead in our cafes. Just to talk a little bit about Blue Bottle, we are a global coffee retailer and we actually have humble beginnings at a farmer's market in Oakland. So our founder, James Freeman, um, at the time he was really tired of stale over roasted beans and he sought out to roast and sell his own beans. You know, since then we've expanded beyond the Bay Area and now we have cafes all over the U.S. and Asia. Um, and you can also find us in grocery stores or have your coffee shipped directly to your doorstep. But throughout all this, we've held true to our original purpose of providing delicious coffee at peak freshness. And in addition to delicious coffee, we're also known for having really beautiful spaces that you can see on the right and delicious food. Uh, my favorite happened to be our waffles. And just to give you a preview of my talk today, I will talk a little bit about kind of the beginning, the challenge, and how we, um, how we solved that challenge, a specific case study, and then kind of what we're doing with data um, in the future. So Blue Bottle in 2019, um, we had about 65 cafes. Our e-commerce business was holding steady throughout the years, making up about 10% of the business. We had just launched the app in 2019, and we had decent adoption rates. Global was making up about 3 to 4% of all of our transactions in our cafes. So we saw a lot of potential in these digital properties. Um, on average, we saw that our digital guests were more likely to spend more um, and our mobile guests spending on average 10% more than someone who orders in person. And our e-commerce guests were spending 3x as much as a cafe guest. Then 2020 rolled around. Um, we saw a pandemic and also a huge uptick in digital adoption. And now we saw that the potential behind each digital channel was realized. So then fast forward to you know, 2021, today after the pandemic, we're up to about 110 cafes. We are still seeing some reduced volume in our cafe traffic. However, on the flip side with our digital channels, we've seen that now e-commerce makes up about 25% of our business revenue, up from 10%. And then mobile is now 25% of our overall cafe business up from three to 4%. And so with this growth in our digital channels, we now have an interesting challenge on our hands. So we once relied on, and actually still do, on our friendly baristas to you know, provide the care and attention to our guests and you know, play the role of our hospi hospitality masters, just anticipating the needs of our guests and you know, they're oftentimes the reasons why our guests keep coming back to us. So now we're introducing the app, we're leaning into our e-commerce subscription business, and oh yeah, by the way, we're also launching a new kiosk ordering system. So as you can see, there's now this reliance on digital platforms. How do we scale this hospitality across all of our platforms? How do we stay connected to our guests who interact with us digitally so that we can still anticipate their needs? And now I'll talk a little bit about our approach to this problem. So this was kind of our worldview for a while. This was, as you can see, very channel-centric. We have in-store guests, we have mobile users, e-commerce guests, and also the kiosks. So what I'm trying to show here is that you know each channel is just swimming in their own lane. Um, but there's something that's missing here, and that's our guest. So what now we're trying to do is head in this direction of being super channel-centric to becoming more guest-centric, you know, viewing each channel as just another touch point for our guests to interact with. And just to walk through a very simple example of how our guests can interact with us, on the same day, our guests can order a cup of coffee using our app, really enjoy this cup of coffee, and decide to order the same bag of beans on our website to get the coffee shipped directly to their house. And then maybe a few weeks later, they'll receive an email about our in-person brew classes and then sign up to learn more about brewing the perfect cup. 
this is really just a, a simple example to illustrate some of the ways a guest can interact with Bluebottle and the need for a unified view of the guest interacting across all of these different touch points. And this unified view of our guests just doesn't happen overnight. We know that in order to achieve this unified view, our guests have to become active and invested participants. So at Bluebottle, we are building towards a membership framework to nudge our guests along this journey of membership. Starting from the left, we have our anonymous guests, you know, those who visit our cafes casually, then to our connected guests, those who might transact with us and also subscribe to our email newsletter, then to registered members, those who have created accounts with us and maybe use the app to order ahead or e-commerce guests who purchase items on a somewhat regular basis. Finally, the pinnacle of this framework is our subscribing member who either has a subscription or is a part of our eventual membership slash loyalty program. And we truly believe that when guests and members invest in us, when our members provide us access to information like their favorite drinks, preferred coffee, flavor profile, we can better anticipate their needs in the same way that a barista would. And with that, we can offer the same kind of hospitality across all of our digital platforms that you would see in our cafes. So obviously this benefits the guests, um, but we also know that since digital guests spend 3x more than cafe guests, we project that we can grow our top line by 40% and improve marketing ROAS when guests spend more with us. Of course, this guest journey towards membership is all um, enabled by this foundational layer of omni-channel analytics and marketing. Um, and at Bluebottle, I wanted to call out specifically two of our technology enablers, which are Segment and Iterable. So Segment is our event tracking platform across our app and our website. And using Segment allows us to create a complete picture of guest behavior across all of their devices. Additionally, Segment comes with lots of different integrations to other platforms to easily enable omni-channel marketing. So to give you a sense of kind of what we were working with before, um, before we had Segment, in order to even attempt to unify guest data, we needed to build custom integrations from each of our digital channels to all of these different downstream destinations, um, like marketing-related platforms like ESPs and our ad platforms, which meant that we had to spend more engineering time building and maintaining these integrations. With Segment, the beauty is that we only need to set up an integration once between all of these different digital channels, and we immediately have this ability to send this event data to various tools, and one of them happens to be iterable. To give you a sense of just you know, how we're using the Segment and iterable integration, Segment does all of the heavy lifting of piping the data from our different digital channels to iterable. And this allows our marketers to easily access event data to trigger campaigns across all of our channels. A few examples, or this is how I like to think about the way we're grouping um, the data coming from segment. So we're sending things like browsing events, like page and products viewed. We have purchase events. And these are critical in being able to attribute revenue associated to a campaign. Uh, we also are sending segment traits, which can pull directly from our data warehouse and are things that like calculated LTV or someone who is an existing coffee subscriber or even things like the most frequently visited cafe. And next, I just want to spend some time talking specifically about um, just one example of how we're using the segment and iterable integration. In 2020, um, during Black Friday, we anticipated that many of our guests would not want to venture out to our cafes in the same way that they would have pre-pandemic. So we decided to target our cafe guests, specifically our app users, to inform them that they can do their holiday shopping online. And so we had this week of gratitude where if an app user you know, opened their app, an iterable workflow would be triggered to send them an email with a promotional discount on our e-commerce site. The impact of this was we saw an increase in our open and click-through rates with a 55% increase in our average open rate and five times our typical click-through rate. Especially exciting, I think, to our e-commerce and marketing teams was that you know, in our pool of app users, we acquired first-time shoppers on our e-commerce site. 
So these were people who had been using our app, but maybe had no idea that we even had an online presence. And we were able to acquire them at about 50% of our typical marketing costs. Definitely a lot more efficient. And yeah, I think that just to call out the three main things we got from this, one was just the ease of use um, in setting up a simple workflow, pulling segment data and piping it directly into Iterable was just stupid easy. The integration didn't require any engineering. The second piece around is around content relevancy. You know, we learned that our cafe app users were interested in our e-commerce site um, and that there was potential for us to use similar methods to have our guests transact across multiple channels. And not only was there interest, but finally we saw that um, we were able to acquire new e-commerce customers more efficiently. So once they're in the of the e-commerce site, we can also better nudge them along our membership framework, our membership journey to eventually sign up for our subscription. And then lastly, just wanted to cover some of the work that we have ahead of us. Um, obviously our work isn't done here. And one of the things that we have on our plates is to implement iterable push notifications. So once we um, move on to iterable as our main platform for sending push notifications and sending emails, we'll be able to better target our messaging across these different marketing channels and build more holistic workflows. And then secondly, more around data. Um, you know, currently we're sending our customer data into iterable through segment. Next step is to send data around product releases, new cafe openings and recent blog posts. And the goal here is to introduce more automation in our marketing efforts to dynamically update content based on the email send and to reduce the dependency on our design teams. And then lastly, um, also wanted to spend some time um, a little bit on the technical side talking about our data pipelines. Of course, segment is one piece of the puzzle. Um, we're in the process of modernizing our data stack um, moving from the traditional ETL model to an ELT model. So that stands for Extract, Load, Transform. And you can see with this model, we're now putting both raw and transform data into our data warehouse, whereas ETL model you know, traditionally has um, transformation of the data coming before loading of the data into the data warehouse. Currently, we're using tools like Fivetran to pipe in data from our various sources. Of course, segment for loading event data, DBT on top of this to transform all of this raw data so that it's, we can actually use it in downstream systems. DBT is this great tool that allows our analysts to have these new superpowers in the data stack and allow them to use SQL to generate clean and usable tables. All of this transformed data sits on our Redshift data warehouse that segment can pull from and send into these different marketing platforms. So you can see segments sits on both sides of our data stack. This allows us to not only take in event data, but also to continue to send more advanced metrics. Um, I mentioned this previously, but we could send things like LTV or the results of our guest coffee quiz to tools like Iterable. And just to recap, um, just our overall data strategy. So, you know, our first step was to unify guest data across channels using segment. And then secondly, we use Segment's turnkey integrations to push guests toward membership. And then finally, I talked about this recently, but to, we also leverage our modern data stack to enrich guest profiles. And all of this just unifying our guest data to provide really exceptional hospitality on our digital platforms. Thank you for listening. Um, I will be at the speaker Q&A, but if you would like, you can also send me a note at oriana at bluebottlecoffee.com. Thank you.